Hey, it's Mr. Albert here, and we want to talk about oblique asymptotes. We've already talked about vertical and horizontal asymptotes when dealing with rational functions. Um, but let's see here. An oblique asymptote occurs when the degree of the numerator is one more than the denominator. So I've got an example down here. It's f of x equals the numerator is x squared minus 4, so the degree of the top is 2. The denominator is x plus 5. Uh, we don't see a degree there, so it's understood to be 1. So in the example I have here, x squared minus 4 all over x plus 5. The degree of the numerator is more one more than the denominator. Um, but if we have an oblique asymptote, it will take on the form of a y equals mx plus b. So in general, it will be a slanted line. <clears throat> okay. So we had vertical and horizontal lines as asymptotes, but this also gives us a chance to have a slanted, a sloped line as an asymptote. And this can be reached by, uh, can be found by using polynomial division, which I'll show you in a moment. Uh, but the oblique asymptote for this is x minus 5. And I just want to show it to you on the graph, first of all. So to do x minus 5, we would have a y-intercept of um, 0, negative 5, which is going to be hard. I'm trying to show you the characteristic of the asymptote, so I kind of lose it a little bit. Uh, but in this graph here, negative 5 would be around here. And then it has a slope of 1. which means up 1 over 1, which could mean up 5 over 5. So just trying to show you what this asymptote looks like. It goes through all these perfect little points. So basically, as we go away from the origin, we see the graph getting closer to this sloped line. Okay. So on the top side, you see it getting close to the y equals x minus 5. And then on the bottom side, you see it getting closer to the y equals x minus 5. So that y equals x minus 5 is a characteristic that we could put in there. And we know our graph will get closer to it if the degree of that numerator is one larger than the degree of the denominator. But where did that x minus 5 come from? So let's see here. So we're going to use polynomial division. So let me write out polynomial division. It looks like long division. So we're going to take the denominator, x plus 5, and we're going to divide it into the numerator, just exactly what a fraction means. Um, and the numerator was x squared minus 4. I'm going to put in any missing terms. So I'm going to write x squared. And I'm going to make sure I put in all degrees less than that. So I'm going to put in a plus 0x, since there wasn't a x term in there. And then I'm going to put in a minus 4. Now that 0x is kind of like a placeholder. If you wanted to divide something into 104, uh, you would make sure that you put the 0 in between the 100 and the 4, the two place values. So let's see here. When we do polynomial division, we always use the leading um, term of the um, divisor and divide it into uh, the leading term under the division. So we say how many times will x go into x squared? Well maybe an easier way to think about that is if you had x squared over x what would it simplify to which would be just x? So x goes into x squared x times. Now, just like regular division, we're going to multiply back. So x times x is x squared, and then x times 5 would be 5x. And then just like regular division, we're going to subtract this off. So I'm subtracting a quantity, so I'm going to make sure both of these are subtracted. So x squared minus x squared will go away. 0x minus 5x will give me negative 5x, and I'll bring down the next term. This looks an awful lot like regular division. So then I'm going to say, how many times will x go into negative 5x? So if it helps, you can write that out as its own individual fraction. Negative 5x over x would reduce down to just negative 5. So that's the next term, minus 
5. So minus 5 times the x will give me negative 5x. You always want that leading term to cancel out. And then negative 5 times 5 will be negative 25. So I'm going to subtract this off. Negative 5 minus negative 5x. Sorry, negative 5x minus negative 5x zeroes out. Negative 4 minus negative 25, I believe, gives me a positive 21. And if you try and say x in the 21, you do not get anything that reduces here. So we're going to stop. So this is kind of like a remainder. Okay. So the explanation here is that if we divide x squared minus 4 by x plus 5, we get that it goes in a whole number of times x minus 5 and then there's a remainder of 21 over the divisor. So basically if we look at this, this function gets close to x minus 5 but it has something over here that's keeping it from actually quite getting there. There's always a little bit more than x minus 5 keeping it away but um, as x gets larger, this little piece over here gets smaller since we'll be dividing by a larger number. So this quotient here becomes the oblique asymptote. Okay. Let's put that here. Okay. So we're going to use polynomial division to do that. Now, we've been through some examples with um, where we found the vertical asymptote and the horizontal asymptote. Uh, a couple things here. If you have a horizontal asymptote, you can't have an oblique. Um, so we don't need to look at everything, but we're going to look at one in particular because we had this function. 3x squared plus 2x minus 4. And that was all over x plus 2. And the reason this is interesting to us is because the degree of the numerator is one more than the degree of the denominator. There's an x squared on top, there's an x to the first on the bottom. So we're going to do some polynomial division to figure out what the oblique asymptote is. So we're going to divide x plus 2 into 3x squared plus 2x minus 4. So all the terms are already there. So x and the 3x squared. Okay. Um, we can do that as 3x squared divided by x would give me 3x. So 3x, I'm going to multiply it back. So 3x times x would be 3x squared. 3x times 2 would be plus 6x. I'm going to subtract this. 3x squared cancel out. 2x minus 6x would be negative 4x, bring down the negative 4. So then I'll have negative 4 divided by x, excuse me, negative 4x divided by x, this leading term right here, divided by the x, that will reduce down to negative 4. So it'll go in negative 4 times. So negative 4 times x would be negative 4x, negative 4 times 2 will be negative 8. When I subtract, I'm down to 4, which x will not go into 4 evenly. So, clean this up a little bit so we have a place to put it. I'll make some room over here. I didn't have a horizontal asymptote, which doesn't guarantee I have an oblique. But I do have the oblique at y equals 3x minus 4. So let's try and graph that over here. But it comes from this quotient. 3x minus 4. So over here we've got minus 4 and then our slope is 3x. So up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. So we've got the slanted line coming through here. So we may run out of room when I actually get to the point where I want to graph the real function but and that's supposed to be a straight line, so I apologize it doesn't look so super great. Um, but that's the idea, the oblique asymptote. It should be a straight line going uh, through there.
Okay, next we're going to put our graphs all together. 